Hello Anna, thank you for joining us for this Zoom interview this afternoon. We're here to talk about your experiences of organising donor briefings. So I think a lot of people here will know you as the Deputy GNC Cluster Coordinator, um, but you have a wealth of experience as a Nutrition Cluster Coordinator. For example, your work in Yemen as Nutrition Cluster Coordinator from 2017. And so we're going to draw on that when we think about some of these questions. So my first question to you is, could you please describe for us some of your experiences of organising donor briefings? I thank you for your questions. Um, absolutely. When um, I was, for example, a nutrition cluster coordinator in Yemen, I used to organise quarterly calls with, um, with donors. Um, the situation was quite difficult for uh, people to travel to Yemen. So quite a lot of people were working outside and I was organizing regular briefing because they were not able to attend um, cluster meetings. Uh, but obviously also as a part of the cluster coordination meetings, um, donors often attend and already know what is happening in the clusters. Thank you. And could you tell us who you think should attend donor briefings? So this was depend on your particular purpose of the donor briefing and how often you want to do it and want, what you want to achieve from that. Um, in my experience, it's better if you have your coordination team representatives, but also depending on the topics that you discuss for each of the meeting, you can invite different people um, who have a particular expertise or experience in the areas that you need to discuss. And especially when you foresee that there will be a lot of questions from donors on particular subjects. In your experience, how often should donor briefings be organized? Well, that also depends on, um, on your situation and it depends uh, how fast the emergency is moving um, and how often you need to update donors because the situation has changed, because your key asks are changed. Um, so I would say probably as an initial rule, I would organize in a stable emergencies, maybe a briefing every three months, um, three to four months. But then if it's an emergency, uh, which is a rapid onset with a lot of things changing, you can make this um, much uh, more often. For example, sometimes you might even want to have a weekly briefing if it's a beginning of the emergency and everything is changing so fast and you need a lot of donor engagement. So as long as, as both parties are willing, I think you can um, set up some schedule which works for both of it. And the main is to have this schedule so everybody is aware of when they're going to receive the updates from you. I know that it will vary a little bit on the context, but what do you think are the core things that should be discussed during donor briefings? Um, so it very much depends on, on what your key asks and what is uh, happening in the clusters. For example, if it's an HNO HRP development process, you might want to discuss more about your plans for the next year. Um, if it's process when you were monitoring cluster performance, you can uh, say that this is what, what has been um, agreed with the partners and maybe this is the areas of improvement and this is what support which is needed. Um, so in general, it should be very much based on what you think is the key information that you need to give donors and what is it that you need um, their support. So then when you request the support, they understand much better why you are doing it. So right. maybe, maybe just to say, sorry, maybe just to say that it's a perfect opportunity to advocate to donors for whatever um, you as a cluster needs and whatever major issues you as cluster, not as cluster coordinator, identified. Um, so I would uh, advise before donor meeting just to have a quick call or meeting with the SAC and discuss key points so that you all agree that you are raising the correct challenge with them. Do you think it's helpful to share any cluster information products with donors at the briefings? Absolutely. I would hope that um, every cluster coordinator would share information products once they are produced with all the donors not waiting for this particular meeting. Uh, but it is also useful 
I would say before the meeting or and after the meeting to share the summary um, documents related to the discussion, just so that they have the full package in case they need to refer to it or share with other colleagues. And finally, do you have any advice for nutrition cluster coordination teams who want to organise a donor briefing for the first time? So donor briefing is a very good uh, opportunity to engage them, but that's not the only engagement avenue. Um, so setting up relationship before donor meeting is extremely important. And um, organising this meeting, not as your initiative, but in discussion with them, where um, you discuss maybe bilaterally, maybe in the cluster meeting with them, what, why you want to have this meeting and what you want to discuss this meeting um, would already um, set you on the path to, um, to understand each other better. Okay, great. Thank you very much for your time, Anna. That was really helpful.